Hello and welcome everybody. I'm glad and excited to be here. Uh, my name is Frank Gardban and I am a PhD candidate at uh, the University of Hamburg. My uh, PhD work focuses on the conversions between HPC and cloud, which actually requires an optimal data sharing between HPC and cloud resources. Object storage is the best candidate to achieve this. It organizes data into containers of flexible sizes referred to as objects. Each object includes associated metadata and has a unique ID. And usually a simple hash of this ID determines where the object is physically located. And since uh, HTTP is the de facto transfer protocol for cloud storage, we are going to evaluate its viability and base performance for storing and retrieving objects in comparison with a native, native HPC transfer protocol, MPI, which is believed to offer superior performance and lower resource consumption. On the other hand, we will assess the performance improvement of the newer version of the HTTP protocol in the HPC context. And uh, I want to mention here that this paper is available in the THPS incubator. Here I will be providing some info on why we wrote this paper. Actually, we wanted to test the performance of different object storage implementations. Uh, the one you can see on the right side. However, halfway, we started asking ourselves some questions. For example, if a certain object storage implementation is not performing enough, how to find the real cause of the problem? Is it FTTP, the most common transfer protocol for RESTful services, or is it the actual implementation? Or is it, for example, the server or the client application? Or is it the hardware itself? Those questions aren't trivial as it seems, because there isn't simply enough research about the cost and overhead of HTTP inside HPC. This is why we'll address all of these questions in our paper. Let me start with the methodology. We know that typical HPC applications require maximum performance and minimum latency. This is why we introduce a latency model based on hardware performance counters, which will help us identify performance bottlenecks and assess the performance of the provided hardware. A tool called Liquid is used to read out performance counters. We conduct several experiments. The first one uh, is done on, uh, are done uh, on the uh, WR cluster, which is a small research cluster found at the German Climate Research Center, like I said, uh, and it's equipped with a gigabit Ethernet. And the second set, set of experiments are done on the supercomputer Mistral, also found at the DKZ, and it's equipped with FDR InfiniBand. We define as well a REST benchmark that's integrated with the above tool with Liquid, and uh, we integrate the Uzu micro benchmark with Liquid to test the MPI performance. We compare the results and we investigate as well the performance of the newer HTTP uh, protocol versions. Uh, and last, we validate our model by comparing the predicted results with the experiment we observed value. I'll be describing here our model alongside the standard network matrix we focus on hardware counters, namely the number of required CPU cycles to identify the processing cost of a data transfer and the memory evicted from the CPU at cache. As already mentioned, those counters will be provided by Liquid. Let's start by defining our model. Knowing that T-request is the time to complete a request, uh, we can safely say that T request is the time for the client, plus time for the network, plus time for the server. T client can be further split into T compute, plus T memory, plus T compute. Uh, T compute is, for example, the time to pass the request. And the same can be done for T server. After some refinements that you can find in our paper, we end up with the following equation. 
where alpha is a weighting factor, the beta E are platform and protocol dependent factors, HG is the round trip time, R is a CPU clock rate in health, both is the number of unhalted uh, cycles on each core, and uh, L-try, L3 EV is the data volume flowing through the FG cache and net TP uh, network throughput. Now that we have a model, we can introduce our REST benchmark. It consists of a web server hosting files of different sizes. These files contain randomly generated data in order to minimize the effect of compression and are initially placed in TEPFS to minimize any storage related overhead. The tests are accomplished using the WRK2 tool, which is a standard HTTP benchmark tool. While the benchmark is running, Liquid is recording the performance counters already defined in our model. The first tests are executed on the WR cluster and will help us to understand how a REST service performs related to object size, number of connections, and number of threads. Here we can see the latency variation in relation to open connections for a file of size 100 kilobyte. And here is the same, however, for a file of size 1,000 kilobyte. And here you can see the latency variation in relation to file size for 24 open connections. The same, however, for 500 open connections. As we notice, the latency does not depend on the duration of the experiment. Moreover, it linearly increases with the number of open connections. The higher the number of connections kept open, the higher is the chance of congestion leading to the activation of TCP flow control mechanism and eventual data retransmission, which in turn causes an increase in latency. This is especially true for small file sizes. However, when the file size grows beyond a certain limit, the number of connections will become irrelevant to the already high introduced latency. Now, let's have a look at the throughput. Actually, we have here the request per minute, which is proportionally uh, proportional to the throughput. Uh, the diagram here has all the factors that we are taking into consideration, object size, number of connections, and number of threads. An increase in the number of open connections or in the number of threads will increase the throughput. However, for file sizes above one megabyte, the influence becomes negligible. Not to mention that the increase in the number of open connections increases the congestion rate, causing the benchmark to return different errors. From these experiments, we learn that to optimize the latency and throughput, the web request should not be using different open connections, but rather use one or a relatively small number of open connections and label the web requests accordingly, which is actually introduced by the newer version of the HTTP protocol. Now we come to the resource usage. Here we see the evolution of the CPU cycles used for each scenario. What's interesting here is that the servers that the server seems to be consuming more CPU cycles as a client to deliver a request, which might be due to the fact that we are using the light TPD web server without, without any optimization. Here we see the data volume flowing to L3. Basically, when reading a file, in this case, the HTTP response, the client needs to store the data received in memory. If the file size, however, exceeds the size, the size of the L3 cache, we expect that the data is evicted to main memory, which is measured in L3 cache evictions, causing a performance drop. Curiously, the rate of increase of the client evicted memory is greater than this of the server, leading us to another interesting conclusion, namely that while most studies focused on optimizing the server side, it might be the client side that needs to be addressed. The next set of tests are conducted on this chart, which is equipped with InfiniBand. Here you can see an overview of the MISTAR topology. For the REST benchmark, we launched the same tools used above, Liquid on light, uh, plus light uh, TPD on one node and Liquid plus uh, WAK on another, while varying the file size in a power of two and recording the different metrics to test MPI. 
we will be using a liquid integrated version of the Uzu Micro benchmark. Let's have a look at how the Uzu Micro benchmark works. Uh, here we can see the Git latency benchmark, which is carried out by the origin process, which calls MPI get to directly fetch data of a certain size from the remote process window into a local buffer. It then waits on a synchronization call. MPI will complete for local completion of the gets. The remote process participate in synchronization with MPI when post and MPI when wait calls. Several iterations of this test is carried out and the average get latency numbers is reported. While the benchmark is running, Liquid is recording the hardware performance counters already defined in our model. Here we see the endless test. It's very similar to the latency test and is carried out by the origin process calling a fixed number of back-to-back -back MPI gets and then waiting on a synchronization call. MPI when complete for the completion. This process is repeated for several iterations and the bandwidth is calculated based on the lapse time and the number of bytes received by the origin process. And now here we see the results. We actually compare REST over TCP over InfiniBand to a native MPI, which is actually MPI over RDMA, to MPI over TCP. As we can see, for small object sizes, the latency of REST is obviously higher than both flavors of MPI. The throughput achieved using native MPI is better than the one using REST. However, when comparing MPI and REST, both over TCP, we notice that this is not the case, especially for very small and large files, which leads us to the conclusion that the overhead due to the TCP stack is the main factor slowing down the object storage implementation. The performance tip that you can see in the red line for uh, the native MPI for file of size around one kilobyte is actually due to the MPI implementation that use a combination of protocols for the same MPI routine, namely the use of eager protocol for small messages and rendezvous protocol for larger messages. And here we can see the resource usage. Uh, the various transfer protocols can be recognized by the different colors and shapes for both server and client. As you might see, in the first diagram, the CPU cycles needed for the sender to push the data when using MPI is higher than by using REST. This becomes visible for file sizes above 100 kilobyte. The second picture shows that as expected, the evicted data volume stays constant in the case of MPI over RDMR because of the direct data transfer from server main memory to client main memory. Furthermore, the L3 evicted memory for both REST and MPI over TCP is constant for file sizes for files smaller uh, than 100 kilobyte, but increases exponentially afterwards, presumably because parts of the protocol, such as network packets reassembly or assembly, is controlled by the kernel and not the network interface in this case. Now we want to evaluate our model. Hardware, the hardware and network parameters are provided by the Mistral configuration and are displayed here above. And uh, we use a regression analysis tool to calculate the beta e. The exact calculation can be found in our paper. We end up with the following equation for the different uh, protocols. As you can see, the latency of uh, MPI, native MPI or MPI over RDMA is expected better than the others. Uh, REST and MPI over TCP show otherwise similar performance characteristic. Do not hear that if beta 5 above 1 is above 1, it's an indicator that we cannot achieve the full network throughput. Now we want to see what the new versions from the HTTP protocol offer. Uh, 
Uh, for this purpose, we change the tools used in our benchmark to support the newer version from HTTP. And we are now using the Open Light Speed uh, web server and the H2 load uh, for benchmark. Uh, to note that we test here the ngtcp2 implementation of HTTP because it's LS library independent. And since HTTP3 didn't achieve the maturity, maturity phase yet, we are using the protocols that they are defined in the 27th draft by the IETS Quick Working Group. And here are the results. For latency and throughput. As you can see, HTTP 1.1 and HTTP 2 offer similar performance. However, the HTTP 3 implementation seems to be buggy. Let's have a look at the resource usage. Uh, before, uh, here are the results on Mistral over InfiniBand. We have similar results here. And here uh, we have the resource usage. As you can see, HTTP 1.1 and HTTP 2 have similar resource usage. However, the chosen HTTP 3 implementation is around 10 times CPU and memory consuming in comparison to the other versions, which clearly indicate implementation immaturity. Now we come to the final part of our presentation, the conclusion. This paper provides an assessment of using REST as an input output protocol in an HTC environment. A performance model based on hardware counters is provided and validated. Our results demonstrate that when the same transfer protocol is used, in this case TCP, REST can provide similar latency and throughput to MPI while enabling better portability. A careful comparison of the different HTTP protocols suggests that newer version of the HTTP protocol may have potential to improve performance. And uh, in future work, we are going to validate that trust is a performant and efficient alternative to common HPC input output protocols in an actual HPC scenario, which may eventually lead to a seamless convergence between HPC and cloud. Last but not least, we would really welcome your comment about this paper in the GHPS incubator. Thank you for watching, and please don't hesitate to ask any questions. So thanks a lot, Frank, uh, for uh, finishing a, a bit uh, earlier. So we have a uh, right. few minutes for questions. So I've not noticed questions in the chat, but uh, you can ask them live. So this is Julian. I just want to add um, a couple of things. So uh, what Frank hasn't mentioned is that this work that he presented is part of his actual PhD thesis, which is about you know looking at the convergence between HPC storage and the cloud storage, basically. And then he started to look into it, right? Then it started to raise these questions. Why is actually MPI faster? And I think, Frank, you were a little bit fast. Can you go back to the slide? you compared MPI uh, performance, you showed the latency and the uh, cycles that you measured with uh, liquid. I think four slides or five slides in the middle. I just want to make an addition. Um, this one? Yeah, yeah. In this yeah, one? Mate. No, no, one. Yeah, this is something, but go go to the ah, other this one. one. This one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same so when, you, so when you, I, I would just want to point out one interesting result um, for me was that we realized that uh, in fact it turns out when you look at the left uh, part you see the cpu usage right and there you see uh, the ib over tcp and you see ib using uh, rdma which is the yellow and the green so the yellow and the green they are in fact on top pretty much uh, up until you know you go to the very right um, of the left hand graph and we found that this is probably due to the way that you know the infiniband and the mpi is optimized for low latency right so it uses spin logs as is well known i know um that caused the issue that they actually are very cpu 
hungry compared mm -hmm. to rest when you look at the rest kind of a performance which is the red line for example which is really on the bottom so this is a difference of um 5x in terms of cpu usage right and i i was surprised in that sense because i always thought you know um that it should be more efficient from the perspective of mpi to do um this kind of operations compared of doing them via tcp ip but it turns out it's not the case and well we can see why we can see on l3 cache that there is a difference for larger files when M where IDMA has a benefit. If you go back one slide, Frank, to the um, okay. this one, yes, we see that the yeah. very small, you see the blue line on the bottom, for example, the throughput of the rest was in fact faster, better than MPI. Like this shouldn't be the case, right? And on the right hand side, for very large files, it was also competitive. It's just in between when there are basically there is the benefit of using the InfiniBand stack and using even the network optimized benchmark OZU, don't forget, right, this compares the OZU benchmark with using a web server, so to speak, that delivers files. So naturally there is expected to be faster. So um, yeah, I would just say there is certainly room to be an optimization at the DQZ system. To, to lift this better, but um, generally I was um, surprised and it shows that there are cases, these boundary cases, if they would be properly optimized, maybe the benefit of um, MPI wouldn't be that big. Okay, that's my extension, it may be. And this is actually what the new version of uh, HTTP brings along. Uh, HTTP3 uses UDP as default and uh, maybe this will help to uh, overcome the TCP issues. Yeah, but in your measurement it showed, right, that in fact the current implementations, they are not yet ready because the performance yeah, yeah. You're, was you're right, you're right. Or, or worse for HTTP3, it was much worse, um, which again shows there might be potential and maybe this is, you know, if the um, HPC community would work together better with this cloud kind of vendors, drive forward this um, type of the HTTP3 uh, usage, I'd say maybe there isn't the potential to actually minimize the gap between MPI and uh, REST implementations, which gives a better chance to um, use the storage. So, uh, Julian, I will have to, to moderate you. So we have one question from Glenn, uh, and I have also one question, and we have only one minute to, to go. Uh, so um, REST versus MPI resource usage on, on the left figure, CPU clock unaltered just may not uh, represent performance. Example given, spin locking your CPU to get lower latency higher performance. So I guess that's addressing the methodology in the way you have selected the hardware performance counter. Would you have any comment on this? Where basically you are burning cycle. Actually, you mean this slide? This one? I suppose that was the question, yes. Actually, you're right. Uh, it doesn't. Should I reply here or in the chat? Oh, no, you should reply here, verbally. OK, I, I should write it. I should write my answer or? Uh... Oh, no. OK. No, no. So the, the answer, please, Frank. Oh, I do it for you. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, it, the latency was uh, was uh, uh, wasn't bigger for uh, for uh, MPI over RDMA, uh, and this is actually uh, reflected in our model, as you can see here. Right. So the model terms, they really show that MPI over RDMA, when you look at the lowest one, it has one half of the cycles, which is Cook's, um, which means actually, in fact, you need twice as much cycles in average um, to 
for the you know for the time of the request so during the same time basically burn twice as much cycles that's what i got more description in the paper i think those equations are really nice i was again very surprised that they show uh, nicely how those um different protocols work okay. and implementations so I will have uh, uh, one comment before we move to to the next uh, talk. So I, I would have been interesting to see not raw performance number, but efficiency number to, to see basically how much I'm saturating for my network interface and how much I'm saturating for my CPU um, performance. Because we know that sometimes, you know, the bottleneck is on the CPU side or on the network side. So having this in the model will allow us to make some projection. If I get, for instance, a HDR uh, IB instead of EGR and things like that. So it's just just a comment. Okay, thank you for your comment. 